Are we on? Are we on? Welcome, welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I am your host, Glenn Poole Harding. And oh boy, we have a very, very special guest. This basketball head is a three-time NBA champion. In college, he was three times player of the year and three-time All-American. So you already know what we in for for tonight. He is a New York City all-time great who played at the legendary Paul Memorial Academy. We played with the likes of New York City legend and NBA Hall of Fame inductee, Chris Mullen. This basketball head also put in a lot of work in the playgrounds of the New York City legendary basketball tournaments. You count him. He was there, him and his brother, putting in that work. So you already know he's certified as an all-around ball player that could play anywhere. In high school, he proved to be a Division I talent but like most of us coming from New York City during those days, were plagued by academic issues, including myself. But that didn't stop this basketball head because after a year sitting out, he became one of the best players in Division II history at American International College. His coach, Jim Powell, kept the scholarship for him and the rest is history. He became Rookie of the Year for the conference, three-time college All-American, three-time player of the year prove to everyone he could play on any level, including in the NBA. But that route wasn't easy. This basketball head was cut from the NBA camp, but got redemption overseas in Ireland, winning championship and MVP, then moved on to Portugal, winning championships there two times. He also played in Argentina before coming back home to play for the Albany Patroons, where he was an all-star. Then as you know it, the NBA came knocking. This basketball head got a shot at a 10-day contract with the Philadelphia 76ers and turned that into an 11-year successful NBA career, along with three championships, of course. His first championship came against our hometown Knicks, and he proved he had made it to the biggest stage in the NBA. Who can forget? That kiss of death, one of the most memorable clutch shots in NBA history, being down 3-1 in the series against the Phoenix Suns to win and get their second straight NBA Finals win. He would win another with the San Antonio Spurs before he retired became a coach in the NBA for 2013 to 2016. So, without further ado, help me welcome to the show. Power Memorial Academy great, American International College legend, Hall of Fame inductee, and three-time NBA champion, my guy, Mario Ellie. Let's do it. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yes, yes, yes. You have you just have listened, listened to, 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 the to the world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Tickets get the game about to start. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening, my brother? I'm doing well, man. Thank you guys for having me, man. Appreciate it. Listen, it, it's an honor. I'm a, I'm gonna be one to say it right off the jump, man. It's an honor to have you. Um, when we was talking about who can we have on the show and represent. Uh, New York and all the accomplishments they have, and you know, especially for the next level, uh, your name kept coming up. Your name kept coming up, and I reached out to you. We was playing tags, hit and miss every now and again, and then we finally got it right. Finally, got it right, man. 
So I just want to say, man, just from myself and everybody out there, just want to say thank you for putting on for New York City the way you did, my brother. It means a lot to all of us because we was watching every step of the way. I appreciate that, my brother. Great intro. I appreciate you guys. You know our New York history. Uh, I know I live in Houston. Right. I, I, I rep New York 24-7, 365. I battle with these Astros fans because I be sporting my Yankee. <laughs> Yankee hat is like a right. worldwide hat. You know, I was right. in Europe. I told you, wearing my Yankee hat. We worldwide, dog. We all over the world. So That's right. That's what that's I'm right. dealing with. Love my Giants. We 4-1 right now. So New York right here. Love my city, man. <laughs> we can tell by the way you play, man, and that, that swag that you carry on the court, man. So – Definitely uh, New York love all the way. Um, all my people that's in the building, I need y'all in the chat room right now. Leave the comments. Let me know if if everything is working out on both ends. If we smooth, if we smooth, put a thumbs up in the air. We got a fellow uh, Power Memorial alum, my guy Ron McCants in the building. Salute to my guy J.E. that's in the building. Says salute Mario Ellie, my dude. Uh, being I was a Haitian American ball player in New York City. Salute to Mario and Olden Polonies. Facts. That's most important. People don't know about our Haitian heritage, where we come from. And uh people know now, you know, Haiti's just it's not it's not a good place, you know. But uh I thank my mom and dad for coming over here and giving me, my brother, and my sister a better life, you know. Love my city. They migrated to New York. And, you know, we got Haitians all over, Brooklyn, Queens. All over. That's right. That's Boston, right. Jersey. We all over the East Coast. Florida. Facts. You know, so we everywhere. Facts. Yo, Ron, give me a thumbs up if, if, if I got a stable connection and everything is good, Ron. You know, it's one of my moderators, man. He's always uh, keeping me abreast of what's going on. My guy from uptown, and he went to Power Memorial. So he's sending me all this history from the school. And I think I he was there right before it closed. So, I, I want to jump right into this, brother. Always ask everybody who come on the show, who introduced you to the game? I got to thank, uh, it was two people. Uh, it was uh, my brother, Clark Ellie, who's not with us today, and a good friend of mine who ran the who ran the NBA Pro-Am for a while, Ray Diaz. Yes, yes. I don't know if you know that name, Ray yes, Diaz. Yes, I do, yeah, yeah. So, he grew up in the Douglas Projects. I grew, right near, I grew up right near the Douglas Projects, like a block away. So I knew a lot of those guys. I would go to the projects, hang out with them. Grew up, I was baseball was my first sports. You know, I, I love baseball. Dude. Talk that talk, man. Same for me. Same for me. Baseball, yeah, my man. first it's sport. to get me off that baseball field. <laughs> I, I was loving that baseball, man. You know, really into it. But then, you know, my brother saw it. He saw I was growing a little bit. So he introduced me to the game. And I started loving it. Started playing in 99th Street Park. And that's why I thought Ray Diaz sort of like, man, you got a nice little game. And he got me started on a PSAL on 123rd Street, some little gym, like uh, the smallest full court, dude. You know how it is in yeah, Harlem. Yeah, yeah, that's it right. Small, it was a gym on 123rd where we used to practice. And then that's where it really started for me. Kids was rough in there. You know, you got to go hard. You know how New York ball is. You just can't go in there soft. You know, you got to go in there. That environment is a tough environment to play in. And like you said, that's why when I played in, tw in front of 20,000, playing at the Garden, playing at the Forum, it was nothing like playing in New York, man. On you get your test Street. early. You getting tested early, right? Yeah, 139th Street with 3,000 people, you know, on the gates and fences. I try to explain to guys that experience, but they can never understand it. And it always stays with me. That was... It was amazing playing nine o'clock at night, music bumping, forties, blunts going crazy, <laughs> uh, no, no interaction. Dudes just having fun, no yep. violence. Yep. They just want to see good basketball. I remember my man Ike threw it off the glass to me. I dunked it. The crowd went crazy. You know, just a great place to grow up as far as hoop, man. I tell you that. Man, those are, are the days, man. We, we, we're trying to bring that back. And, you know, we, we used to have some great tournaments still in New York. You know, we got the Dykeman, we got the Rutgers, we got the Gersh, we got the Zone 6. And I even got my my uh, homeroom court, the Brevo Coliseum, back in action uh, this summer, man. So 
Those are some legendary places. West Fourth is still going on, you know. I think me and my brother got like five or six chips down there. We was running it down in Harlem, USA. So let me tell you, brother, before I joined uh the homeboys, the Brownville team, right? Yeah. That that's what they always talked about. This is how I found out about you. This is before, you know, you kind of had hit the big time. I I was just getting the you know, doing the knowledge of the young guy and my guys with the white brothers and Earl Robinson, they would tell me. They'll be like, yo, them, them Ellie brothers, man, they something, they, they're no joke. So if you, you can't come down here playing soft, you got to play defense, right? And all of these things that you guys have bought and that you guys were the model for that, especially that, that tournament during that time. Whoa. Now on the outside looking in, I'm going to let you go, that that small court, right? That PAL court in Harlem prepared you to hey, play in hey. West Fork. Yes. Same thing. It was like what you see, the WWC, you just see two warriors in a cage, right? <laughs> just going at it. And that's how West Forth was. Because I thank my brother, because in high school, you know, he had me playing with grown men. If it wasn't for my brother, I wouldn't be in the place I am. God bless his soul. Yes. So my <laughs> first year playing down there, fam, I was light. You know what I'm saying? They were fouling me hard, knocking me on the ground. And, you know, they was just roughing me up. So I'm like, okay. And we really didn't have success that year. Grew a couple inches, got stronger. Them next guys next year, fam, I was carrying them to the rim. I was dunking <laughs> on everybody. Me and my brother, we just took over West Fall for like a five-year, six-year stretch. Nah. We could not be beat. We always played the White Brothers. We knew it was going to be a physical game. But you know what? We got hard uptown, too. Not just in Brooklyn, bro. We got hard uptown. And tell the White Brothers, they know. They took a lot of ass whippers from Harlem, USA. I tell you. No, they, they they told me. These are the guys who kind of schooled me. Um, so Great I, I know. Oh, yes. Great. When I used to laugh, when I used to watch and play other teams, they just used to punk teams. Yes. They just used to punk them. And they'd be scared. <laughs> they file them hard, run up on them. Dudes just fold. I used to laugh. I said, I can't wait to play them. Because we knew what they were, were about. They said, right. Of Brooklyn boy, they walking in like 12, 15 deep and they playing physical and rough and they used to just intimidate you. I used to laugh. I said, but well, we weren't intimidated, but those guys made me also. They just instilled toughness in me playing against guys like that. Just mean and like you said, the White Brothers, like five of them. You already know how they come in. And, and, and if you mess with one, the other four are going to be jumping on your neck. So. Yes. It's a lot of them. They'll be coming from all over. And oh, the guys, all over, dog. And, it, and it, the, the, the young guys, the younger brothers, who you think of the older brothers, are the younger brothers. And they bigger than the older brothers. Hey, fair fact. So, and it was, what I liked about them, it was rough, but they kept it hoop. Yes. They respected us. We respected yep. each other. And it was basically just about basketball at the end of the day. So, I know everybody, you know, they came with that mean bravado. I know they used to intimidate guy, but. We weren't gone for that, dog. We weren't gone for that. No, we you were guys gone. were the model. I'm, a, I'm, cause that's what how I learned, right? It was like, okay, you only can get so much playing with us, right? These are some of the guys that you're gonna have to worry about, and definitely, uh, Harlem USA was definitely that crew because you know we Brooklyn come with something different, and if you can't match it, it's, it's, oh well. Big up to my man. What's my coach name? I just it was on top of my tongue. The big man. Who, who's coaching Harlem, me or say Motley? My Motley, boy, yes, Motley, yes, yes. And what's my man who run the tournament? What's his name? Kenny Bob. Graham. Kenny, Kenny Graham. Kenny Graham. That's yep. my dude right there too. Yeah. So really enjoyed it, man. Just like you said, dudes on the fences. I get the championship games were packed. I mean, people just people say, "What are these people looking at?" They look. Everybody's hanging on the fence. Right. The games were great, intense. The All Star games there were great. I, I just love the environment, man. And I, I tell my sons that story all the time. Growing up in New York, RYA, yes. uh, Citywide, Rucker, yep. you know, King Towers. Yeah. I was part of that. You know, I'm watching the point guard documentary, Rod Strickland talking about Pearl coming in the motorcycle. I was at that game. I was at that game. He had the big Pac-Man chain, came at halftime. Dropped 35, jumped on the motorcycle, 
and it just bolted back out. The fans was going crazy. So that's the environment I try to tell my kids yo, I grew up in. Just amazing, man. Yo, let me tech, man. Tech on the plate. This is part of the show, right? The fact that you were there, right? Because, you know, well, I guess when people hear these things on documentaries, they think it's just us kind of stretching the story a little bit, right? Kind of, you know, embellishing on the story to make it sound better. Facts. 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 Yeah, man. Facts. Yeah. That dude there, man. He come play, bro. You got to get there two, three hours before the game because there's going to be no seating. That's how special he was. I just wish Pearl would have got in better shape and developed a jumper. I thought he just – he maxed out in college. You know, he yes. had an average NBA career. And as nice as he was, that's yeah. all I'm saying. No, a that's the very true. I grew up playing with was sort of nicer than me, but I feel when they got to the NBA level, they didn't sustain it. That's the key. You got to sustain that level. You know what I'm saying? Once you get to that mountaintop, like you said, here me, a Division II guy, end up playing 11 years and winning three championships. And starting two out of my three championships and third on the Rockets history in playoff games behind mm. Akeem Olajuwon and James Hart. Marioli's number three, brother, only playing five years. That's a little fact for you, my man. Whew. Third all time in Rocket history in playoff games, only playing five years with the team. Harden played nine, Dream played 16. So, what that's telling you, your boy played in big moments. I ain't sit on the bench waving a towel. New York, not at all. not at all, brother. Listen, and, and I, I'm telling you, man. You know, growing up uh, watching you guys, uh, I, I I just would be in awe of how hard you played and never back it down for anyone. And it was, you know, when we just look at each other, and be like, that's that's that New York City, you know, because it's good. It's good to get to the NBA, but it's even harder to stay. And I, and I get mad at people trying to compare this era is better than the 90s. Y'all crazy as hell. I'm brought <laughs> Michael Jordan, Jamal Mashburn, Grant Hill, Glenn Rice, Anthony Mason, Ron Harper, John Starks, Vince Carter, Allen Iverson, Kobe. Don't tell me that the 90s is the best era of basketball. Yes, yes. It's Michael Jordan, and we're not scared and backing down. That's the... I love LeBron, but Michael Jordan all day, every day. Put Kobe in there. You got to put Jabbar in there. Those are goats. Tim Duncan. Those are goats, man. Those are goats. Those, those are goats, man. And I got a chance to play with, play with all these guys. You know. Yo, yo, you making me so proud right now because I have these arguments all the time. Dude, and when they be these... having, and and when they be having these New York lists, and I'm not <laughs> on it. Don't be. <laughs> None of these guys have more NBA success to me than Chris fucking Mullen. You know what I'm saying? I played with Ed, Ice Reynolds. They didn't play. They didn't have a no, career like I no, have, brother. No. That's all I'm saying. Get, get this Haitian boy a little respect. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. When you put a New York list, I need to be on that list. Definitely. And beside Kareem, I got the most rings in New York City. I know Bob, maybe Bob Cousy. If he, I think he might be from New York. Right, we right, Ethan Queens. Yes, yes. That who know the game. Right. R six is me three. Who you got after that? I know Rodney McCray got one. Gus Williams got one. I don't know who else, but I got three of them joints. You know what I'm saying? John and John Sally. John Sally has a few. Yeah, he got four. He right. got four. Right. So right. I gotta give him his props too. Definitely. But besides definitely. that, who? Who? Exactly. No, that's who, real. Who bringing the hardware, man? You know nah. what I'm saying? So that's all I ask. Just a little respect, bro. Just a little respect. That's all I ask for. I'm, I'm telling you, for everyone that I told you was coming on the show, they were just like, you serious? How how you get him? I said, your brother, he's part of the fabric, and we've been talking for a minute. Before this, I was up at St. Ray's, right? And right now, a real huge game going on uh, between – St. Ray's and South Shore, right? South Shore, three-time Raiders City champion, and St. Ray's, you already know about their history. Yeah. And each win of the game, you know, my guy had to test the waters. My guy, C. Will, had to test the waters invitational. Very big for high school basketball. I went, and every player got a basketball head shirt. So I'm taking pictures, and I'm like, yo, I, I can't stay for the next game. 
I got to get out of here. Why? Yo, fam, you know I got the interview with Mario. Yo, my guy, salute to my guy, Arthur, who is ref in the game. Say, yo, Pooh, I got you. We going to make sure you get home on time. So I was home 45 minutes early to do that half hour back and forth that we had to get on the show. Thank God. We got so, it brother, done. let me tell you, you got a lot of respect in New York City. But with this show, I'm going to make sure, I'm going to make sure people put respect in that name because it's, it's definitely due and you earned it. That's, that's all I'm saying, fam. Like you said, I played in these parks. I was first team. You remember, you remember growing up, you wanted your mug shot on the post. Thanks. You want to be one of them top 10, either Catholic or public. I was on that with Ernie Myers, Chris Mullen, you know, Ed Pickney, Dwayne Johnson, who are still my friends to this day, you know, but I come on, getting in the post back in the 80s, man, being from New York, dude. Come on, you know that, right? Listen, Get, that's what we live for. That's dude, what we when live I got for. That bug shot, dude. I didn't even sleep that night. I said, I'm one, I'm one of the 10 in the city. I said, I'm one of the 10 in the city. And then I remember we lost a good friend of mine. I haven't seen him in a minute, Ernie Myers. Yes, I had him on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We lost to them in the city championship. Tom and, and then Tom. Ernie Lloyd came to me after the game. So I want you to play for Riverside Church. So that was that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Nah, you know what's so crazy? You and Derek Chivas are the only people that I've heard call that picture a mugshot. And now that you look at it, it's only a headpiece. That's it's all the headpiece, <laughs> dog. That's it. That's it. I was so pumped. I'm like, yo, I got. I told my red home. I told my sister. I got that. I'm I'm top ten in the city. Right. I got the headpiece. Nah, and that's it was just, just a big picture. thing. Because, you know, the little article, you know, they'll put the little power against or how they put the numbers, but never put no pictures. They'll right. Put, you know, he had 25. When we got your picture in the Post or the Daily News, dude, come on, man. You know back in there, that was big time. That that was big time. By any chance, what's up to my guy, uh, Tom Rivero, big fan of the show, and Harlem historian, he said, ask uh, Mario, did he have any battles against Cheese Johnson, uh, Alonzo Jackson, a.k.a. Super Kid, and Steve Burt? I, I've had some battles with Steve. Me and Steve played in uh, the CBA together up in Auburn. Okay. We played together. But those guys were just a little bit older than me. I remember watching Alonzo Action Jackson on 99th Street. This dude had the handle, the pass. Ooh. This dude was nice. You know, this dude was nice. And I remember Cheese. Cheese was a bad boy. You know, I met, I'm, I remember Carlton Hines. You know the story yes. of Carlton Hines? Yes. Him. Yes. I didn't know he was doing the other stuff, but I just remember the Hooper. He was a bad boy. He was, I remember, listen, I didn't know that either. So that's. Yeah, I remember loser, going yeah. up to 55th when Joe Hammond was playing and couldn't find a spot. I had to climb like three rows on the fence just to watch freaking Joe Hammond play. So I remember watching him play, man. New York. How good was he? How good was he? Because I I never had a chance to see him play in person. Dude, the dude scored so easy, man. It, it was crazy, this dude. The bank board jumper he had from deep, just getting buckets. And I'm hearing the stories about him coming at halftime and dropping 40. But those, those, those stories uh, – Make me hurt because I want to see guys like him in the league. You know who was a good friend of mine? Earl Manigo. That was my man. You know, I used to play in this tournament on 99th Street. That's where right. I grew up. That was his park. I helped him buy shirts and trophies when I got in the league for his tournament. Unfortunately, he passed away. And Rest his story, peace, yes. Earl Manigo. I'm like, yes. Man. Yes. Another dude that, you know, I wish could have played in the league that was that was really nice. You know who came on the show and bragged about you a lot? My guy, Barbito Garcia. That's my, he live in the next building, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. Dude, he wasn't no baller. They always have it on these basketball shows. I'm like, dude, you ain't who? Listen. He wasn't no baller. Listen, we, we he's definitely, we can say a baller, but not to the tip level that yeah. people kind of revere. And he came on the show and he straightened that out. He said that. He okay. explained his whole story. You know, how he didn't really get playing time. He's not making movies now. He's doing his thing. There you go. Because once I had him on a show, and then I had guys hit me up in the DM, was like, 
Why are they saying this dude is a legend? I say he's a hip hop legend, right? Who just happened to play basketball, but basketball for his life kind of took it to the next level for us playing everywhere in every tournament and taking advantage of those opportunities that wasn't given to him in college. Yeah. He told those heartbreaking stories and he kept it real. That's the one thing I love about Bob. He he didn't fabricate anything. Yeah. He's a good dude. I'm glad uh, he's doing awesome. thing. Yeah. You know, he had his music with the DJ. I didn't know he had all these dudes. He was doing that. So yeah. I'm very proud of him, man. Very yeah. proud. I ran into Julius Allen today. Julius Allen from the Bronx, ball player and coach. Now uh, he used to coach um, at – he used to coach with uh, Ray Haskins at LIU. Now he's part of the PSAL. Oh, really? Um, yeah, he coached at Morgan State and a whole bunch of places. But what he told me, he was uh, talking about your brother. He said – Whenever we would play, his brother would push it to the limit and, you know, kind of make him play hard. And he said, make sure you mention that. We had mentioned your brother Clark early on the show, but I definitely yeah. want to throw it in there. Julius Allen. Yeah, because that's my man. Um, just remember, like you said, growing up in New York, me and him, and we just take three other players. We'd go to parks all over Manhattan. We'd be on the call from 8 to 5. <laughs> we had to go to no gym with no nets and all that. we bring our five. Who going to take us off? So we said, we dominated this park. Let's go to 79th. So we run that park all day. So we go another park. We run that. You know how it go. Yeah. That park all day. So we like, man, where else we got to go? You know what I'm saying? So I love that. And my brother, 150% made me the ball player I am today. Pushed me. Had me playing with older guys at an early age, which helped me with the physicality. I remember Rod saying in the documentary, and and Stefan, ain't no files in New York. No, ain't no files. In, no, nobody want to hear that. Game point in New York may take forty five minutes in New York. <laughs> game point, fifty files, uh, no. fifty travels. You know how that go, dog. No, that's right. That's Only right. Charles about, and that's what it. We love about New York, man. The competitive, the average ball player think he Jordan. That's that's what I love about New York. He may not be Jordan, but he think he is. That's right. That's what, that's what made it for growing up in the city. Well, well, being a, a ball player, confidence is everything, no matter what level you on, right? Because you could be the nicest guy in the world and someone take your confidence, that's it for you as a ball player. Yeah. Until you regain it and somebody kind of help you regain it. But early on, we have that confidence early. And I think a lot of times when we hit to that, that next level or that ceiling, it's hard for us to break through it because – our egos uh, uh, keep us from getting to the next level because like you had to do, right? Well, the good thing about me, I got better as it got along. Like me and you talk, Pearl, a lot of these guys were good so early. Yeah. They felt they had to work on their game. Yeah. And that's, they've got a bunch of guys, as you see, just as nice as you all over the world. So I feel a lot of guys that reached their peak. Me, I was sort of like a work in progress. Like you mentioned my story, I went to Milwaukee and American International. I'm like, you, I got all these accolades and I'm playing sort of like the three and four at my college. Right. So I get, I go to Milwaukee Bucks camp. Dude, I'm the second shortest guy in camp. <laughs> God knows to say, yo, you the point guard on this team. I'm like, what the hell? So that was a very eye opening experience for me. That's probably the only time in my life I was happy to get cut because I knew I needed a lot of work. Yeah, going twice a day, three hours a day. I remember the first day. This is in the summertime. It's not even regular training camp. So I go to the summer training camp with the Bucks. I'm drafted seventh round, the, the second to the last pick of the draft. I'm 160, 160, right? Yeah, yeah, 162. I'm like, man. So I get there, bro. Man, that first day, two, three hour practices, bro. My legs were shaking at the end of the day. I said, how the hell am I going to get through this week? So I'm in the pool all night trying to get the soreness out. So I had to deal with that sort of all week. And I knew when Don Nelson called me and said, I got to let you go. I, I was very happy. And I had to readjust and say, I need a lot of work. I got to be in better condition. I got to work on my dribbling. I've got to work on my shooting. That was a great eye-opening experience, which, like you said, led to a lot of things where I needed to work on. 
Wow, that's 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 really good to hear. So, you know, all you young guys who's striving to get to the next level, pay attention, right? Pay attention to these lessons so you can have, I mean, you can make your path a little bit better, right? Because a lot of times we don't have the information. And I think that's what hurt us a lot because we're lacking the information, right? So they can come on and get it from a veteran like yourself who had to work to get there and stay there, compete at a high level, you know, their transition to be a lot better. Yeah, hard work pays off, even the great ones. I mean, look at LeBron. I mean, he do loves to play. He keeps himself in shape. Michael Jordan played 82 games, nine years. That's what bothers me about this 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 year NBA. What's load management? What is that? Yeah, yeah. I love the game. I want to play every night. A fan may pay a ticket to see me play one night. That's why I always used to play 150% when I played. That's why I still got love here in Houston. I mean, I can't go nowhere down here. People come up to me and say, man, I just love how hard you played on the court. And, I, and you leave an impression on people. That's why I love Kobe. I love Michael Jordan. They said, I didn't want to miss games. I played at an elite level on a nightly basis because the kid may see me play one time. I wish these athletes now would have that mentality. How am I going to take games off? I mean, how are you going to take games off? That was like a marker back in our day, playing an 82-game season. Right now, come on, man, 50 dudes want to play 60 games, you know, 70 games. It's for the fans, man. A kid might not be able to see you play that night. You know what I'm saying? He paid a ticket on LeBron coming in town. Play. Play for them, man. You know what I'm saying? It's about the fans, man. Man, couldn't have said it better myself, man. I have these arguments all the time. Not really arguments. It's more debates, right? And I, and I try to explain to dudes, a lot of you guys – probably never seen Michael Jones for a career, right? You're, you're going off highlights. You never really watched them in real time, right? Like you got to watch LeBron or Kevin Durant and a lot of these other dudes. And then, and then let's, let's take for instance, even though guys went to Jordan camp, right? He wasn't friends with them. A lot of these guys are LeBron boy or sons. <laughs> you that's, know why, that's why I mess with Giannis. Giannis said, I ain't working. With you. I'm trying to bust your ass. That's what I'm That's trying right. to do. That's right. I mess right. with Giannis. I ain't going to join no super team. He did it by himself. He did it by himself without not joining no squad. He got it done and had the 50 piece to top it off. Man, I was so proud of him, man. That dude, he's been getting better. Uh, he's a good kid. Guys like him and LeBron are great examples. They're family men. Yes, yes. They're they dedicated to the game and to their family. They give it all. They, they, you see the love of the game those two guys have on the court, and that makes me proud. I'm going to be sad when LeBron leaves the game because he's a great example. Father, yes. a guy who takes the game real serious, what he eats, how he approaches it. And that's that's a that's a pro, man. That's a pro's pro. You know what I'm saying? That's how you. And shows play. up to events where you know probably you know the the other greats probably wouldn't do it, right? You wouldn't catch. Uh, Michael Jordan at McClancy High School watching his son play, interacting with the, the kids. Yeah, and it's it's different. You know, Michael's different. You know, a little more mature, a little more old school. And, and LeBron is this school. That's why everybody love LeBron. Yes. LeBron, yes. You see LeBron at the AAU games. I love that. Yes. I love that how he's involved in his kid's life. I like uh, He's a great example of a father. He's, he's real involved in his kid's life. Definitely. But we need more black men out there like that. We need more black. I'm a father of three. You know, I'm proud to be a dad. That's that's my m most important part of my life is being a dad. I wish other brothers would take that serious. Now, well said. Definitely well said. Now, <clears throat> when we talk about uh, you getting to the next level, right? You played that Paul Memorial right before close uh, with Chris. Now, were you older than Chris or younger? Where did y'all fall? Because I know Chris, when it closed, Chris went to Zavarian. We were the same age. Uh, Chris, I think, is his birthday is in June. Mine is in November, so he's a couple months older than me. He wasn't happy with the coach his junior year. Okay, so okay. We played together in 10th grade and half of 11th grade. So his dad and him, they weren't feeling the coach. So he transferred in the middle of that season to Zavarian. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, he transferred in the middle of his junior year. So he played his senior year as a variant. 
and became a McDonald's All America. You know his story. Yeah, well, but I didn't happened, know that. I didn't know that part. I thought he left when the school closed. No, he left in the middle of his junior year. Wow. See, that's why you don't listen to rumors. You listen to people who have to they on real time. He left in the middle of his junior year because he wasn't happy with the coach. So he went to Zaveria. And what that allowed is your boy to be the main man of the, of the team now. So, so now, now it was making sense. Now it was making sense. This is why I, I like, you know, to get the story from the person itself. Because somebody going to write a book or write articles, and when we go research these things, they're not going to get it right. You got to get it right. You got to be, I was there. I was there. I was playing as my man, you know. And it's funny, the first team I really get hooked up with is the Warriors. And Chris is the guy that really took me under his wing my first year there. And that set the sort of the 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 mark for me to last 11 years. Mm. So I will get to that NBA story in a minute. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. It's broken down to me. Wow, wow. So you you having this fantastic year. Right, become all city, one of the top players in the city, and you realize it now uh, because of the great situation that you have to take a, a different route. How how was that transition for you? It was one of the most difficult times of my life because I remember going to five star too. I went to five star my junior mm. senior year and played great. You know, I'm getting letters from everywhere. I'm like, wow, okay. And uh, they were. And then I had I played where I told you after the city championship I played for Riverside, and we were killing people everywhere. And I was getting some love. I was getting low division ones, but the grades wasn't good. I didn't want to sit out a year. I wish I would have known about prep school. I didn't want to go to junior college because junior college is a mess. Uh, I still wanted to go to school and get a degree. For right. Sure. So I was in a quandary, man. So. It was three weeks left, and my dad was a hard, it was a hard man. God bless his soul. He's like, "Yo, you gotta make a decision, dude. What you gonna do about school?" And like you mentioned, AIC, that dude spent his whole budget recruiting me up there. That coach, he spent his Jim whole Jim budget. Powell, right? Jim Powell, yeah. yeah. And I finally came, and I was like, "Man, and you talk about a dude with a chip on his shoulder who was just mad because all oh, my boys are major division one, Chris." is at St. John's. Ed is at Villanova. Dwayne Johnson is at Monte Christi. Who else? Kenny Patterson's at DePaul. George Allen's at Pittsburgh. Troy Truesdale is at Iona. I'm like, how am I the only guy to go to Division II? So, dude, that that just lit just a fire that just never, never, and I took all the way, I took that all the way to my last game of the NBA. Because I wow. always thought I had to prove something because of that slight. You know, you know, you know, being a top yes. 10 guy on the yep. bookshop and not living up to, you know, going to college. So that bothered me. I'm like, wow. Especially but everybody I, who was expecting that, right? Because in New York is different. Every corner we turn around, everybody like, where you going? Who you who recruiting you? Where you going next year? Exactly. So that that bothered me. So uh and like you mentioned, I went there and just said, I'm going to make the best of the situation. I had two great years. I was debating if I should transfer or not. So that was a tough decision. Because I'm like, I'm seeing all my boys on the tube, CBS, all these dudes getting off. And I'm getting off and nobody ain't knowing about it, you know? So, But trust me, people people was paying attention because your name was getting out there. And I, I tell kids all the time, Go to where who wants you. A lot of times we want to go where everybody else wants us to go, right? Yeah. And we don't go to the place who really love us, who's really going to put the ball in our hand and believe us. Because no matter where you was at, and I say if you could do it at a high level, no matter where you at, somebody's going to find you. Absolutely. They're going to find you. No question about it. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, the best of it, like you mentioned, you know, Three-time All-American, three-time Player of the Year at the conference. First guy to dunk on my new bowl. Nobody knew about that. Hold on. Time, time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Yo, you, yo, you got another tech on the play, fam. The first – now, this week he was at Bridgeport. We're in the same division. I'm in AIC at Bridgeport. Bridgeport comes to AIC. 
Marielle goes down the middle on a 7'7 skinny-ass African and flushes on him. Mm. And flushes on him. You can ask my man Craig Ware. He living up in Westchester. You can ask all the people at AIC. Your boy, Manu Bo, came to AIC and got flushed on by Mario Ellie. Mind you, I just saw Fact. a video of him blocking Fact. five NBA players shot in a row, right? That back-to-back -back dude's trying to dunk on him, which is not an easy feat. But he was long, and but he was skinny. He wasn't... He was a little thick in the league. They put a little more meat on him in the right. league, you know. But he was long. He was all that. He's blocking a lot of shots in Division Two. But your boy went down the middle on him, and New York City flushed on him. Was it an M one? Was it an M one, Mario? I don't think they called the M one. It didn't matter. I'm not. I got it done on the dude seven seven <laughs> in my home gym. That's, that's real fact. That's a hundred fifty percent fact. But wow. that, they lucky they had YouTube and Twitter. They've been all on Twitter. I guarantee you that. Oh, for sure. For sure. When did you realize, you know, uh, that you and AIC was a perfect fit? Like, when did you realize? When did the kick in and say, you know what? This is a place, you know, that I'm going to make, uh, have a legendary career. The coach put the ball in my hand since I was a freshman. My first freshman game against Sacred Heart was 28 points. Mm. And the rest is history. Once I got 28 on one of the best teams in New England in the Division II, my confidence level was through the roof. I felt nobody can stop me, and that's what happened. You know, I, was, I should have been first team All American my senior year. I was pissed. I was second team All American my junior, and they put me on second team. I know it was Jerome Kersey, Manu Bowl. Earl Jones. There were some guys that got drafted by the Yeah, league. you listen to those names. Charles Oakley was first team, so it was sort of hard to break. They had some heavyweights on that first team, so it was hard to sort of break that first team. And then being a rookie, you also got rookie of the year as well. Yeah, I right. got player of the conference, over wow. 2,000 points. We didn't have no three. We didn't have no clock. Teams were holding the ball on us. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I would have probably averaged 40, 50 if they had a shot clock and three, but we had none of that. And I still mm. got 2,000 points. Double teams, triple teams, teams holding the ball for four or five minutes, not one. You know, four or five minutes. That's, you know how they do that. Yo, I know. Oh, that's I, that Princeton, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when, you know, these bad teams, they get like a 6 4 lead. They would have hold the ball. So I had to deal with a couple. That's why I'm, I would have had way more points. But team, I was dealing with that. But it was all good. Wow. Great experience. Uh, added a lot to my toughness. You know, I'm glad I got my degree, most important. Still got friends there to this day. Uh, not the most glamorous city, but, you know, we made the best of it. You know, I made the best of it. And I was allowed to dream at that school. You know, I was like, okay, I think I could hoop for a living. You know, it may not be the league, maybe overseas. So I got drafted. And like I told you, I got my butt kicked in camp and did my traveling, worked on my game, got to see the world. And uh, I just remember I had my you know 10 day with Philly. That was real quick. But um, yeah, but you didn't I, just I got, do I got a crazy story on that. You will. Yeah, are we going to get to that. But you didn't just travel a little bit, right? Let's let's. Yeah, you I, went to I, Ireland. I, I, you I went to Ireland. Ireland. Yeah, championship Ireland. MVP. You got the Portugal championship like two times. Like you wasn't out there just wasting time yeah, collecting moved, the check. I moved around. I, I did what I wanted to do. I, but I, you was also making yourself a staple wherever you went. Absolutely. As I a winner. To make sure when I wherever I go, they knew who I was. You know, people still in Ireland or or people finding me on Instagram. When you come back to Ireland, people in Portugal. I see clips of me in Argentina. You know, I'm, I remember running into Carlos Delfino mm -hmm. and uh, Andre Nocianoni. They both played in the uh, NBA. He right. said, Mario, you played in my town. I remember you playing in my town. They were little boys. So I said, I remember you were in Argentina. So that was pretty cool. So, yeah, I got to see the world and played in the World Basketball League. I played in the 6-5 and under league. And that's then I played in the CBA with the Albany Patroons. Now, this 6'5 under league is legendary. A lot of people, you know, don't remember it. 
I remember it very well because, you know, I was in that uh, height range. Uh, how long did it last after you left? Just a couple years, but dude, there was dude six eight six nine. Not I'm like, dude, I thought this was a six five with other league. I'm like this dude six eight six nine, but we had a hell of a team. Had my me, my man Barry Mitchell from Virginia State, who was a big CBA guy back in the day. My man Mark Wade was our point guard from UNLV. Right. My man Fred Cofield who played for the Knicks. Remember Fred Cofield? Yes, yes, yes. Eastern Michigan, he played on the team, so. We had the best team with the richest owner, Youngstown Pride. We won it. We beat a team from Canada, Calgary. So we beat them in the finals. That was pretty amazing experience, you know, playing that league. Played against Vincent Askew. Who Vincent me and Askew, them, yeah. I remember we ended up playing in Albany Patroons together. Andre Turner, mm -hmm. who Memphis was in that league. I think John Starks was in that league. Yeah, yeah. yeah there, was a, there was some good players that I seen in the league. That played in that league. And, and this I, is before the G League and all that, right? Dudes, yeah, like the, yeah. the best competition would be playing in the CBA if they were here in America. Absolutely. And then when I got to the CBA, I played against Anthony Mason, uh, John Starks, all those guys. And it's good. And I'm glad to see all those CBA guys have amazing success in the NBA. Myself, Starks, Mason, all came from the CBA, had great, you know, a good, very good NBA career. You know? Right. You know nah, nah, that's 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 real right there. So when, when we talked about uh, going back to when the, the NBA scouts, do you think they had it right with you, as far as you know, saying you the that tweener, right? Because right now tweeners get picked in the NBA and they're good, right? Back then, if you got labeled a tweener, you know they kind of shunned away from you a little bit. That's why I, I, I'm glad I went overseas to – I really worked on my dribbling and shooting, you know, because when you go to Europe, they usually want big men. They really mm. don't want guards. Yeah. But, I, you know, they knew I could put it in the hole. So I felt – when I really went to Portugal, it was really a turning point for me because in Europe, man, them guys practice twice a day extremely hard. Yes. That's why guys like Luka and Jokic who come over here – are ready from the jump. As soon as they hit the ground over here, they ready to go because of the work these guys put in over there. These young boys don't like to work in the States. When I preached to these kids, I said, the European people coming here taking your jobs, taking your money because you allowing them. They working twice as hard as you. You know, Get out there. Get your ass up. Get, 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 get 500 shots up. Guys are training two, three times a day over there, man. You know what I'm saying? So... Now you, hit I, right, you hit it right in the nail, man. To these kids in camp. Look, who the MVP the last couple of years? Giannis ain't from here. Yeah. Jokic got it back to back. He ain't from here. Giannis got it twice, right? Yeah. When the last time a damn American got got the MVP in, when, in the NBA in our country? You know right. what I'm saying? These dudes coming and taking over, man. They, you see this big 7'4 guy from France they talk about? I seen him play. He's He's a problem. That's what I'm saying. These overseas guys, man, they just, they putting in the work, bro. And they coming in taking a lot of these dudes' jobs, yo, I'm telling. Yo. See, I think the kids over here think the more you play games, right, they, they want, they're not going to miss a game, but they'll miss a workout. Yeah, you got to work out, bro. You got to work out and train. Skill work, brother. Skill work. Skill how work. important is the work on your body to get to the next level? Like, how important is, is that aspect of it? It's huge. Because we don't live waste in New York City. Yeah, that's huge. That's what I was telling when I got with Chris Mullen. I remember I played my 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 dad for my first year with the Warriors. Successful year. We lose to the Lakers in the second round. I remember heading home from, from Oakland to New York. Mm -hmm. so I'm hanging out in the city with my family. It's like three weeks in. It's like maybe middle of July, around the 20th of July, my phone rings, and it's Chris. And he's calling me. He said, where you at? I said, I'm in New York hanging out. He said, yo, it's time to get back to work. I'm like, what you talking about? Man, we got like a month and a half left for the season. He's like, yo, get your butt back here. It's time to get back to work. So he, I flew back. I trained with him all summer. Him, Mitch Richmond, and Tim Hardaway. Blessing. I'm glad they all three of them are Hall of Famers. My man Tim went in this year. Very proud of him. But I worked out with those guys all summer, bro. 
And I was probably in the best shape of my life going into my second year with the Warriors. I was having a great season with them, uh, playing really, really well. And then me and Don Nelson got into it, and he sat me on the, on the bench the rest of that year. But those dudes, what they did for me that summer, planted the seed for me how I attacked my summer. I really attacked my workout, my conditioning, my, you know, working on some some stuff, really working on my shooting. So it's the reason I wear 17. It's because of Chris Mullen. Wow. He, taught, he taught me how to be a pro. He said, man, this is why you got to eat. You got to lift your weights. You got to stretch. Just, you know, well, we, the young guys don't have it now. These guys are so young. There's no real good veterans, you know. It's hard to get good veterans on the squad. That's a very important piece of your puzzle on the team. It's having a good veteran to show you. What Draymond Green did, you don't lead like that. You don't lead like that. You yeah. I, I had I had that further down to talk about, but we can talk yeah, about I'm it right now. About that, but I had guys who really, yo, know, this is how you do it. And I never forgot that. And that's why I lasted in the NBA so long. I said, man, what you doing, man? You don't take no break in the summer. I said, I got these young dudes coming in trying to take my job. I got to stay on top of mine. You know what I'm saying? So I really took my summer workouts seriously after working out with those guys. I'm, I'm playing one-on-one -on -one with Mitch Richmond, Hall of Famer, mm. Jim Hardaway, Hall of Famer, Chris Muller. How I ain't going to get better? I mean, them guys made me such a good player. A blessing, man, having those three guys. Do you think that Jermon Green will ever have the respect of Jordan Poole. Now, here's the young guy, right, who probably is threatening your position. Never. 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 You, you crossed the line, bro. And you had and, and you had history of that in your career. Yep. Kicking dudes in the nuts. Come on, man. Do y'all talk a little mess in practice? It happens. Then you go a sucker punch him. That's the weakest move, man. And you know what? People, they leak that on purpose. They yes. probably tired of him cussing yep. people out of practice. Yep. They probably like, yo, we tired of your nonsense, yo. You don't have to lead like this. We know you a rough ride. How, who, is it, who has he fought in the league? That fought nobody. Nobody, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Then you're going to hit your own teammate? That's that, that that's weak, man. That That's weak right there. That's weak. That's weak. Yeah, I, I, I didn't agree with that at all. Um, no matter how tough you are as a defender, no matter if you are the guy who kind of intimidate other players, you never take it to that level, especially with your own teammates. Yes. Yes. I can't look at you the same, bro. I, I mean, then you're going to talk crazy Durant. Yeah. You know, Durant ain't come back. That. Come on, man. You, you getting a little out of, you know what I'm saying? Know your role, man. You're a role player, man. Steph and Clay are the stars. Know that you're a role player. I know he gets a lot of credit for what he does. He does a lot of good stuff. I love him. High basketball IQ, great defender, you know, communicator on defense. But come on, man. Then when he talks to the officials, you, you're, you're married now with kids. You set an example for your kids, bro. You don't act like that. Come on, man. And you know what's so crazy? They, they already took a Hall of Fame status for him. And That's yeah, I'm like, come you on, get what man. I'm saying? Oh, oh, he's going. You know, he's going to be a future Hall of Famer. I'm going. How? Like, no, come on. The standards were so much tougher back in your era, right? There's so much tougher, and you think about yourself. And I'm saying to myself, okay, how? You know, I have a guy that's coming on, and and we, I'm talking about you because I had the discussion. I said I have a guy that's coming on and Mario Ellie this weekend, this week. How come they not mention to him? You know? And, and and think about it. You know, I, I know I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but out of the starting five that was on the San Antonio Spurs on 1999 championship team, your jersey's the only one that's not retired. Like, how? And I'm not here to start any controversy. I'm just a New York City guy, and I'm always fighting for my New York City guys. So when I peep game and I see what's going on, I'm going to say something. So if they mentioning him in that aspect, I'm saying to myself, word? That's where I'm at. But it's all good. I'm so with you on the numbers. Uh, I go to what one of my favorite football players said recently. 
Deion Sanders. The Hall of Fame is watered down, and he's right, I think, in the NFL and in the NBA. Yes. Come on, man. You got to have elite. The, the guys that are in there have elite, not have elite. Yes. Elite number. You got to have yep. elite numbers, man. And I know some guys are getting in after three or four votes, averaging 19, 18. I need playoff success. I need the whole package. Yep. I'm a fan of the game, you know, and, and he's a friend of mine. I love him, and he deserves it. Tracy McGrady. Yes. Phenomenal talent. Phenomenal. Off his regular season deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, but I don't have nothing in the playoffs. What, what You ain't been past the first round. That's and the I'm, first ballot. And the first ballot. That's all I'm saying. I had this argument. Hall of Famer, Tracy. yes, but I need playoffs. I don't need all-stars are good. What have you done when, when you're playing against the best competition? Not when you're playing against a, a, a Sacramento who's 15 and 95 and you get 60, 15 assists. <laughs> what are you doing against Barkley in the playoffs? What right. are you doing against Jordan? I'm going against Clyde first round, Kevin Johnson, Barkley, MVP David Robinson, Sean Elliott, uh, uh, Dennis Rodman, Shaq, Penny, Dennis Scott, I mean, that's that's competition, dude. That's when you earn it, is when you're going through people like that. Regular season, you get numbers 20% against some sorry-ass dudes. Right. You know what I'm saying? So they, they playing on the court, you busting their ass, yo, your numbers are legit, I give you that. But when the money's on the line, you're playing one team every night, that know everything you do when it comes down to mental and physical toughness. I want to see that in the playoffs. At least Barkley was an MVP during the Jordan era and took a team to the finals. I give Barkley that credit. Yes, indeed. David Robinson, he won two. Give him credit. Kevin Johnson's all. Clyde took a team in the Jordan era to two finals. I got to give him credit. But he eventually won one with us. Even Carl Malone, you know, he didn't win exactly. it. Exactly. Carl know. Malone went to two finals. That's right. Got it. And Stockton, you got to get those two boys. They do. That's right. They got to get them boys they do. Like Embiid, Harden, good players, never been to the finals. Give me something. Both of them definitely Hall of Famers, but if you that good, get to the finals one time. Yes. That's what I'm saying. But I watch the game. I'm a fan of the game. I'm a student of the game. And uh, I need it, it, to get in the Hall of Fame, like you said. You got to be elite, man. You have to be you elite. You got to be elite. Yeah. I don't you want my playoff guys. tested, championship tested. You have to be tested on the biggest stage. And Michael Jordan stepped up on the biggest stage. Akeem Olajuwon, Isaiah Thomas, Steph Curry, all of them stepped up on the biggest stage where everybody's watching. Yeah. Everybody's watching. <clears throat> this post uh, that I saw, it had Jordan, one of the best in his, one of the most chips in his era. Kobe, one of the most in his era. But Steph Curry, one of the most in the LeBron era. Just a little no. Just a little no and not joining other superstars, just saying that. Uh, I know this what I, I know we cut for the same cloth. I say the same thing. Everybody play with, with the leading scorer. So listen, again. So yeah. you're telling me if, if if Jordan was like, yo, dream, let's play together. Imagine them two dudes playing together on their team. Imagine them two calling each other in their prime. Them two guys playing on the same team together. It's over, man. It don't matter what eight, ten people you put around those two guys. It don't matter who you put around them two. They go win five or six championships, guaranteed. Just them two guys. You put anything, but they not they competitors. They're not they going to want to play with each other. That's right. I want to play against you. That's right. I, I I used to love it bad. Like I told you, I mean, I got Jordan one night, Isaiah Ryder, Jimmy Jackson the next, Match the next. You know, Steve Smith. A young Vince Carter, you know what I'm saying? Young Kobe, got young Shaq coming in, you know what I'm saying? Young Tim coming through, you know? Got Barkley and them coming through tonight. 
You know, you got David Robinson, Sean Elliott, Dennis Robin, and them coming through tonight. We got Sean Kemp, Shrimp, and Peyton coming through tonight. Woo! Don't tell me the 90s era wasn't thick. Get out of here with that nonsense. Don't tell me Grandma Ma the next night you got. Larry Johnson. With hand checking. With hand checking. Lonzo Morning down in them in Charlotte, man. Come on, man. Mark Price, Terrell Brandon, them up in Cleveland, Ron Harper. I mean, come on, man. And Every you couldn't, couldn't dodge the smoke. You couldn't dodge the smoke. They go to New York, Oakley and Ewan and Mason, them waiting on you. Thug family up in there waiting on you. Ready to beat you up in the car. You know how it is, yo. That's right. Tell me y'all era wasn't now. Y'all crazy, man. Y'all need to stop it, man. Reggie, you know what I'm saying? Reggie and Mark and Sh and uh, Schmitz. Come on, man. Y'all crazy. That that era, man. I'm like, man, do we get any dice off? I'm like, man, Dominique and them in Atlanta. Can't have fun in Atlanta. Got to rest. Kanika ain't no joke down there. You know what I'm saying? So it was just fun, man. Just... The competition level was was like that, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like you got to be ready to hoop. You know what I'm saying? That's so real. The, the 90s, man. Like you said, the head checking. We ready to ball, man. Let's go. Yeah, you got to be successful within that as well. And since we jump in to Houston, right, how, how did uh, Houston differ from Portland and Golden State? Um, number 34. <laughs> number 34 brother is just, it's just one, one uh, two numbers three four you know um got the call i remember going down to the bay area to see some friends when i was in portland drove on back and my phone rang it was the gm of the blazer said we traded you i'm like oh what he traded me he said to houston i'm like woo i'm going with the dream i'm like what and me and V Max was already cool. Right. And v Max used to talk shit to each other. But me and him, were, I said, You're a crazy dude. I'm a crazy dude. So we can fight. We can fight every time we play. I'm not going to back down for me. I know you're not going to back down for me. So me and, end up in, me and him end up being friends because he knew all that craziness, we could just fight. You know, so he knew we would go fight. And we end up being teammates, which is crazy. But we fought in practice, so that was enough. But <laughs> did, when you got there, did, did Kenny Smith embrace you being a New York City guy? All them dudes were just – all my teammates were just great. I mean, I felt the energy as soon as we got to training camp with that squad. Hmm. The chemistry was insane with that team when we hit training camp. That's why we got out that season 15-0, and 0, dude. We got out the gate. Then they talk about we're going to lose in New York and Dream drops 37 on Ewan. You know what I'm saying? At the guard, spinning on them. You know, 37 with the W, go 15-0. Then our plane gets stalled in New York. We get in Atlanta at 4, 4 o'clock in the morning. We got to play the Hawks the next day on the back-to-back. -back. Wow. So that, that sort of ended our streak. So we got to Atlanta like at 4 o'clock in the morning. So we played them the next day. Mookie and them, they ran us off the court. We was tired as hell. So, <laughs> well, yeah. Was, was the dream... Six nine, was he six nine or below six ten? Yeah, he played like he was eight twelve. So I, I know this is what I tell you know, I, guys always like to tell me that I'll say, listen, I'm a student in the game. I know the dream had to be like six nine. He wasn't seven feet tall. He played like it. He played like it, and he was making those seven footers look crazy. Yeah, he a bad boy, man. Bad boy. But top 10 play all time. Oh, yes. He's yes. Number, he's number one in blocks. He's top 10 in steals as a center. The next center is like 60th. He's 10th in steals as a center. This is with Jordan, Jason Kidd, who else? Steve Nash, John Stockton, all of them. Who else are good defenders? He's in there with all of them as a center. And he dropped 26,000 points. What else? When he won in 94, he was the only all-star. There was no other all-star on the team. I'm like, come on, man. This dude did it all. Shaq, Ewing, Robinson. He gave it all of them. He gave all of the business. He gave all of them the business. Yeah, Shaq still say to this day that uh, Elijah Jamal was the toughest center he had to guard. Who said that? Shaq. 
had to say, he bust shot. I'm, I'm there while he busts shot. Like, he, he had to say that. Right. Shaq was looking be breathing hard as hell. Dream running to that box, yo. Shaq tired as hell, man. I'm like, I'm glad we ain't see that LA Shaq. We've been in trouble. Yeah. We got the young Shaq. Right. right. Shaq, Dream would have been done. But now we call them young. So, but That's yeah, real. Dream was just. When you play with guys like that, I was sort of blessed. I mean, I played with three Hall of Famers, like I told you earlier, with uh, Chris Mullen and them. Uh, then I go to Houston and play with Dream and Clyde and Barkley. Then I leave and play with Duncan and Robinson. I'm like, what is God blessing me with all this, with these great players and just great human beings, most important. But just watching Dream punishing guys on a nightly basis, I mean, I played with Dream five years. I may have saw maybe five or six bad games. Mm. That's how elite he was. That's, That's crazy. Was. But not that fam. He played just as hard on the defensive end. Yes. That's the one thing I can't give LeBron the GOAT. Michael Jordan was defensive freaking player of the year. Yep. Nine time first team on defense. Michael Jordan did it on both ends, man. LeBron don't. LeBron who who, who, who did he man. ever shut down? Who did he ever shut down? He had chased down to get Last the shot from behind. He was shooting a jumper inside his head in the finals, but I love LeBron. LeBron <laughs> no, no, definitely, I'm definitely good. love LeBron. He's definitely. But, but we just talking about the go. Man, you know, right. I, I, I just competed against him. He wants to kill you. Like LeBron. He'll shoot you two or three times. Jordan empty the clip on you. Jordan go <laughs> empty the clip. The brother said, "Okay, he looked like he did at the three shot." Right. Nah, Jordan like, "Nah, I'm emptying the clip." Nah, he did not. He did not. So that's the mentality to me that separates the two players. To me, Kobe's like that too. Yes. Kobe don't get talked about enough. They skip that Kobe ball. like he never played. They skip right over me. Kobe. That bothers he, me too. He won. He won two chips without Shaq. That tell me a lot about him. So, no, nah, that's real, man. That's real. The one thing I, I loved about the Houston Rockets, all of you guys bought into your roles. That was the thing that stuck out to me the most about that team. Everybody played their role and didn't try to outshine each other. And not that we had guys who weren't afraid of the moment. You know, yep. one night it was me, another night it was V, another night it was Robert, another night it was Sam. You always had the consistency the first year with Dream, then the second year with Clyde and Dream. And we just knew. You know, we knew those guys were going to get attention. So when it was our time, we were ready. You know, like Bird said in our little documentary, when Dream got doubled, we was out there salivating. That's right. <laughs> we with were your like, hands ready. With like your wild hands wolves. Ready. We were ready and we were firing them. You know, we had good shooters. You know, we had good shooters. And we were letting it fly, and we fit perfectly with that offense. I know I did. I was letting it fly. So, had a lot of great playoff games. I remember had five threes against Seattle one year. You know, I averaged 17 in the finals against the Magic, shooting 60% from three. So, like I tell everybody, I wasn't just a guy who just got involved. I did some things, man, in the association. You know, I did some things. Oh, no, no. You, you did a you did a lot of things, man. You did a lot of things. Uh my guy Todd Rivero, uh, he's he's lighting up this chat board. He said, ask him uh how was it playing with Robert uh Ori and having, you know, similar clutch moments. Robert's so cool. I mean, I just talked to him the other day. It's 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 fun when you experience that with a group of guys that you know, you stuck for life. And uh, Robert was just always, <laughs> man, that dude's so funny. We call him Will Smith. You know, he looked like Will Smith. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. High -time mock. This dude could not touch the ball the whole game. But when you get him the ball late in the game, he's always ready. That's, that's the thing about Robert. You saw it throughout the playoffs. It's not a fluke. It's against Sacramento. Against, I said, what was she doing leaving him on the out of bounds? You don't never leave the out of bounds guy. They threw it That's right, right. Back to Robert. We play in San Antonio in the Western Conference Finals. Robert doesn't have no points. Tie game. We get an offensive rebound. Throw it to Robert. Dennis Rodman was supposed to be guard Robert, but Dennis Rodman was under the basket, of course, trying to rebound. 
Robin looked around, took a dribble, made a big – his only two of the game that put us up two, and we ended up winning that game. So he was just always clutch. Game in 95, game three of the – I guess Orlando hits a big three. He hits a big three in the Western Conference Finals against San Antonio. Just we had guys who weren't afraid, man. We had guys – Sam up in the garden in game three. Man. Sam and Orlando off the bench, 34, busting and talking mess to Penny off the bench. I'm like, we had some rough riders, bro. We had just a group of dudes who weren't afraid, man, who was ready to shine. And uh, Rudy was a great coach. He allowed us to shine. He allowed us to be ourselves, have our personality. You know, we, we like you said, we had a little edge to us, all of us. And uh, we wanted to go out there. Kenny was great. Seven threes in game one in Orlando. He had his big moments. Y'all spread that thing around, man. You you hear all the names and all the big moments that guys had. You know, you know, you had the guy yeah, in the middle like that. That had many guys who had moments like that. Yeah, not 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 many, not you many. It's only one or two. Yeah, nineties. It was the Bulls six, the Rockets two, and the Spurs one. So those are all the championships from the nineties, right there. Mm. You know. Listen, you, like you said, like Bulls had Kukov, Kerr, you know, guys. John Paxson hit that big shot against the Suns. Just like you said, you need these other guys to win. That's the only way. And you bring the everybody level of play up, Absolutely. right? Those guys who are not all-stars, right? If you're the all-star on your team, it's your job to bring the other guys up and have them play at the same level. And that's what great players do. That's what Elijah Wan did for us. When we saw him just performing at an elite level, it just raised everybody else's game. So you're absolutely right. You're led by your, your best player. Yeah. When your best player is cooking, you, everybody else follows. So. Facts. That's a real big fact. Now, you know, I know you and Kenny had to be happy to, to, to knock off the Knicks right, in that championship game, right? And, and I know that was an awesome feeling. But when we, when you talk about those clutch moments, right, and this is what I'm about to get to now, brother, those clutch moments, yours was a little bit different. You are down 3-1 in the series. You're down. Like, really, it's like, why is dude celebrating? Look at the series, fam. Like, you did you know at that moment? Did you know it was over for them for the rest of the series? Well, that was in a game seven when that happened. When that I was game that seven. Out. Yeah, because before it was a lot more drama than that. Like you got said, got you, got you. Look down three one. Bridget, so put your shirt he, down, fam, because your shirt is raised. There you go. All right, there you go. Uh -huh. So we're down three one, and Phoenix has the home court, so we got to win. Yes. two out of the three in Phoenix. So game five. Clyde is sick at the hotel. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, man. Phoenix think they just going to kill us. You know, they think they just going to beat us. But Clyde comes like 40 minutes before the game looking like shit. So how this dude go play? Well, him just stepping onto the court, the team just got fired up. So we end up beating them in overtime in game five. Got you, got and we you. come back home, we smack them up at the crib in game six. Then in game seven, you know, you know, we got Elijah one, we got Clyde, you know, anything can happen. It was a great game. KJ was just killing our guards, yo. I think he had 46, 47. But he missed a big free throw at the end of the game. It would have put him up one. But he missed his last free throw, so it was a tie game. Gotcha. We wanted to hold for the last shot. So I'm going to dissect the play for you. The key guy is Danny Ains. Remember Danny Ains left uh, Paxson to go help yep. out on Horace Grant in the three? Mm -hmm. He was guarding me. So if you see the video, he goes double Kenny in the backcourt. Kenny gets double in the backcourt, so we have to rush our offense. So uh, it's me, Robert, Clyde, Kenny, and Dream. So I'm on the side of the court with Clyde and Dream. And those are the 250 greatest players of all time. So right. they're not even them. Right. So Robert flashes to half court. He catches the ball. And he said, Mario's open in the corner. So it's Clyde, 
Dream underneath, Clyde on the wing. They're not leaving those two. So I'm wide open in the corner. Right. And Danny Ainge ain't in no rush getting back. He doubles and he trotting back. So Robert finds me. I catch the ball. I jump and catch it. I'm like, oh, Danny Shaves is gone. Dream, he ain't going to close out. And Danny Ainge is over there. So I got a good rhythm. And I let, and you know, as a shooter, once you let the shot go. You know it's going. You know it's going. So Thanks. when he saw me cocking the shot, Oh, slow ass Danny Shays try to get out of contest. I'm like, dude, that's this day's too pretty, too late. Right. So I didn't want no Kawhi Leonard hit the rim three times and go in. That thing went on there, fam. That thing went on there. And the first look, dude I looked at was Joe Klein. And you know what I did? I blew him the kiss of death. And the rest is history. Bye bye, Phoenix. Y'all on vacation. Cause me and Joe Klein were messing around since game five. Right. He was score a bucket and blow a kiss. I would score a bu bucket and score a kiss. But you know who got the last and most important kiss? Bye, y'all on vacation. We going to San Antonio. Peace. That's there you it. go. <laughs> Hold up. Make sure. I, I think I have it right here. Hold on. Probably got to get him on the phone. Check this out. I, I'm going off Instagram right now, people. So. You better come on to YouTube, but check it out. Here it is, right here. Be right in that corner. Be late. <laughs> and the funny thing, fam, that's when the pages are. My, I, I, I had so many messages on my phone and page, I couldn't even get back to it. Oh, my man. phone was just, the messages, I mean, the, they had the picture of me in the paper. It was crazy, man. I mean, I didn't even sleep that night, man. My phone and page, it was just, I couldn't ask everybody's, I couldn't return everybody who hit me. All my people were hitting me. I mean, it was great. Just a Did great you hear the net, though? You, you, like, still to this day, the net, the shot going through hit the or the bottom of the net, no it's rim. Fun, it, it's funny when I when I was coaching, I was when we go to Phoenix, I always just had to make that shot. You know, <laughs> would, you know the other coach would pass it to me, and I always had to make that shot from that corner before I went in the locker room. So it was pretty neat. And people in Phoenix are still mad at me. You know what I'm saying? So right. I don't blame them. Charles is still mad at me because they did a they did a special on Charles for his 50th birthday on a NBA TV. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Ernie was interviewing him. And Ernie's like, did that John, what shot hurt you the most? That John Paxson? He said, nah. He said, but that Mario Ellie shot in 95, that shot hurt me. That's the shot that hurt. <laughs> and I'm glad I could be a thorn in Mr. Barkley's side, who I consider a friend. Right. Who I've been with three years, who's one of the most amazing human beings to be around. He's just a great dude, funny dude, and the dude with a big heart. I mean, if you ever sit down with Charles Barkley, dude, he's one of the best dudes you ever want to be around. I had a pleasure of competing against him and him being my teammate, and we're still friends to this day. One of the best dudes. I love what he does on TNT. He's himself. Yes. But off the camera, he's 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 the best. That's just awesome, man. Shaq is the same. Of course, Kenny is. Just all them guys. Ernie's, even Ernie, all them guys are great guys, man. And I'm glad to see their success. And they do an outstanding job. I love watching them. I don't watch nobody else but them when they on. You know what I'm saying? So they keep it 100. Shaq, Shaq, and, Shaq and Chuck, I love them. They keep it 1,000, yo. They don't care. Yes, yes, yes. Whether you like it or not. And they got the credentials. That's young right. Y'all do the research on those two guys before y'all even question when they when they judging guys on the court, they have the credentials to do that. Period. <laughs> nah, real talk. That's that's real. Yeah. So, so you know, you, you win another uh championship with San Antonio. You, know, you talked about playing with those uh two Hall of Famers, and that 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 group was just such a dynamic group. Um, did did you feel like you had another one in you, it, you know, because people, it's not easy to win a championship. You get one, you get two. That's that's a good career. Like, if you win one, that's good for a career. You get two, that's even better. You get three, 
Now you talking. Yeah, man, it was it was funny. Uh, me and Avery were friends at the time. It was between Minnesota and San Antonio. I didn't know, you know, I was a free agent at the time. So Avery said, come down with us to San Antonio. So I came down there and uh, I liked what I was seeing. And uh, it was a lockout year also. We had a lockout that yeah, year. It was yeah, a yeah. game season. So they were starting Jaron Jackson. And, you know, I'm coming off winning a couple of chips. And, you know, I'm feeling good about my game. I told Avery, give me two or three a week, two or three weeks. This is going to be my job, the starting two job, the guard job. So we get off to a rocky start. People don't know a lot of this story. We, I think we start off six and eight. And they talk about Popovich's job is on the line. Wow. You know, Pop was on, on the fire. They're like, yo, come on, you got Duncan, you got Robinson, boom, boom, what's going on? So I think we're playing an upcoming game against Detroit. And Popovich said, uh, there's going to be a change in the start lineup. We're going to start Mario. And all that happens is we we win 14 straight games. We go on to be the number one seed in the West. Who we beat? We beat Minnesota, KG, Terrell Brandon and them in the first round. We had Kobe and Shaq, the Lakers, the second round. We shut down the forum in 99. That was the last time the Lakers played in the forum. We shut them down. Wow. We swept them. We played a Portland team. Let me give you, let me give you a team. Damon Stoudemire, mm. J.R. Ryder, Jimmy Jackson, Walt Williams, Rasheed Wallace, Arvita Sabonis, Brian Grant, Greg Anthony, Gary Grant. That's the squad these boys had. That's what, nine or ten players, right? Easy. All first round picks. All dogs. Yes. All dogs. And we swept them, fam. We swept them. Because you remember the game two, they were kicking our butt. Sean Elliott hit that Memorial Day miracle. I was uh, Joe Montana. He was Ryan Clark. You remember I gave him that pass in the corner? Yeah. He had a big three over Rasheed Wallace. Almost stepped out of bounds. We beat them that game, fam. We broke their spirit. We broke their spirit. We went up there, beat them two games around their place, swept them. Then we go to the Knicks, beat them 4-1. And like you said, I got three kids. I got three rings. Yo, three-time All-American, right? Three-time player of the year. Like, that magic three number is crazy. And yeah, that then, three number is good, tell me. Listen, and, and I say this too, right? You you were the assistant coach for some years, right? But I'm looking at your resume. I'm looking at how hard you work. And I'm looking at every place you went, you were a winner. Right, just imagine if you was a head coach at one of these organizations. Like I'm just looking at it just from your history and resume. This dude is a proven winner, and that same energy, that same fire he will put in this team, they will be winners as well. Yeah, you know, I you know I interviewed for a couple of head jobs, but it worked out great because I was able. My first ten years, you know, I had, I got triplets. I got ninety year old triplets. Wow. So I worked, you know, I, I, my hold man. Hold on, time out, time there. out. Yo, hold on, fam. Do you understand that number three, how powerful it is? I know. That's why I, I told my wife that. Mind, body, and soul, right? Those three, right? You, you talk about biblical sense, right? You talk about all of those things. Mother, child, father, right? Those three. It's the three it's just constant in, in your life. It's so right. I understand I understand why you had to make sure that you're there for your kids. But I'm saying from a, a guy from the outside looking in, I, I would have just known, like, there's no way we don't put this guy in the head coaching position because we know what he's going to bring. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm just glad a lot. I'm glad the diversity in the head coach in the NBA is getting a lot better. Willie Green is doing yes. a better job. Monty Williams. Uh, I think all the brothers are coming in and doing an outstanding job. I feel bad for Eme. We, I really don't want to discuss that, but no, I get it. Trust uh, me. You know, I coach Eme and Sack, but guys got to realize you can't you can't do that. You don't get opportunities like that all the time. But hopefully, he'll learn from it. 
But uh, I'm just glad I want my man Sam Cassell to get a job. Yeah, he definitely That'll deserves it. That'll be the only time I come back into coaching. I'm doing TV for the Rockets right now. I'm enjoying that. But if my man Sam Cassell get a job in the league, I would love to work for him. That's so, awesome, man. That's my dude right there. That's probably my best friend. That's probably my best teammate of all time. That's he went to my prep school. He went to MCI. That's my man right there. That's yeah, yeah. He went to my prep school. Salute Sam I Cassell. I went this summer, so... Philly got a good little squad this year, so I'm hoping him and Doc can do some things where he can get a job. So, nah, no, we gonna we gonna put that we gonna put that in the air, and manifest that man for Sam Cassell, man, definitely a good one. And he he can come from the brotherhood of MCI, so I'm always rooting for him, always, absolutely, for sure. So, if you had one thing in your basketball journey that you could change, what would it have been? I would have loved to go Division One. I would have I would have straightened up my school, you know. Um, my I wanted to, you know, my college experience was solid, but hearing all these my Division One brethren who I played, you know, with, they telling me the stories. They Division One live eating steak dinner, you know, getting sneakers all the time. I'm getting <laughs> yeah. like box lunches. I'm wearing Chuck Taylors. I'm like these dudes are flying to Hawaii, playing on TV. You know, I wanted that. You know, that's what sort of built the chip. I sort of wanted that, but it was my fault because I should have tightened up on my books because I could have went definitely easily Division One, Easily, easily. But like you said, God gives you a journey and I guess me going to AIC sparked something in me, sparked some rage that that when I got on the court that I let out, I said, who is this dude? You know what that. And that's what I did. I stepped on the court, and I wanted to prove that I was I was the guy on the court. You know, and the most thing I'm proud of in my NBA career is being voted one of the top ten Rockets in the last thirty years, mm. 1997. Mm. I'm standing with Charles Barkley, Calvin Murphy, Ralph Sampson, Charles Barkley, Rudy Tomjanovich. Clyde Drexler, Akeem Olajuwon. I'm like, here's a guy from New York City, AIC, who's standing with some of the greats to ever play on the floor. And fans saw enough in me. Said, this dude, look, this dude brought a lot to the team. So I'm glad the, uh, the real basketball fans in Houston, Texas, that chose me. I appreciate them. And I appreciate what they saw, what I brought to the team. I got traded. I got traded to Houston. Sam got drafted. We won two straight championships. That's all I can tell you. That's all I can tell you. So I'm hoping that, you know, I was a big part of that. I felt, you know, I was one of the few guys on both those teams. Because uh, Vernon really left the team in the beginning yeah. of the playoffs of that second year. Yeah. So we sort of played without him most of the playoffs that second year. But. It was me, Dream, Robert, Kenny, and Sam. I think were the only guys who were on both teams. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, just yeah, man. And then, you know, I got a lot of love down here in Texas and Houston. That's why me and the wife are still down here. I do TV for the Rockets, so I'm enjoying that. I get to hang out with my man Calvin Murphy. It's a great dude, and I'm just I love the game. I'm glad I'm part of the game. You know, I love watching basketball. I'm a big fan. You know, of course, I got the NBA package. You know, I always follow my New York brethren. You know, <laughs> whoever's from New York, you know, I'm pulling for. That's always. what we got to do. That's right. Absolutely. That's why I was really excited about that point guard documentary where people could, could really get into look of how a New York basketball player is built. That's how he's built. You know, and uh, it was a great documentary. And I know all those guys. <laughs> yeah. Skip yeah. down here still. Kenny's in L.A. Me and Kenny Anderson stay in touch uh, via social media. Mark Jackson and I stay in touch. So just a good documentary about what New York is really about. So I was pretty neat. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm uh, <clears throat> trying to get uh, Mark, Kenny, and Chris. I had Skip. I had Rod. I had Rafer on already um, and, and a few others. But those... Uh, some of the guys that I definitely want to get on, man. But I, listen, brother, I, I haven't been 
hunting down a person like I've been trying to get you on for a minute. And guys will tell you, you know, if I reach out to you one time and I miss a couple of your emails, like you would hit me back and I look at my email like, oh, shit, hit me back. Like, damn. And again, you didn't ignore it. You got back to me, man. So I, I want to say definitely you're a real one. And right before we get out of here, just we got to go through one thing. And that's the top five, top five, top five, top five part of the show. And we'll wrap this up, man. Get you out of here. All right, my brother. All right. The top five, you named the top five people of the subject can't do six or, you know, people like to bring in, oh, well, these two could be added on just five, all right? My top five basketball players of all time? Nope. Well, this is the subject, all right? Nope. Top five players you played against. Wow. <laughs> okay. That's good. Okay. Number one, of course, is number 23. Uh, I would have to say Glenn Rice. Uh, Glenn Rice was a guy that dude with the high jump at six nine. I mean, bam! That's Gary respect Payton, right there. Gary Payton was a was a oh, Gary Payton was a bear. Uh, Jamal Mashburn, man, God Lee, he was another one. Um. And then I have to say, whew, boy, I, I got Clyde. I got, no, I got a Jordan. I got Glenn Rice, Rice Gary got Payton. Gary Payton. Who was my last two? I had a mash. I got said Mass Burn. Yeah. I played it. It's between Clyde and Mitch Richmond. When Mitch was at Sacramento and Clyde was at Portland, them two were just. See that, and that's this is the tough part of the show because now you got to pick one. Somebody got to like. Ugh. I know Clyde. Clyde was a mom. Clyde was six seven, two damn forty. I mean, these guys were just big at the two guard. You see the NBA little right now. Yeah, yeah. Got Brown at the four, AD at the five. Back then it was we had Otis Thorpe six nine, Dream six ten, Robert Ory six eleven. That was the front line. What about Cleveland? Yeah, Hot Rod at six ten, Nance at six eleven, and Brad Darty at seven foot. We got these whoa well, weak, weak. We got the weak front lines right now, dog. It's, it's light. It's Yo, light. my God, CK said, CK said, uh, what about Otis Thorpe? One of the most underrated big men. He man, just he right. said, it, and I didn't even get to it. So yeah, that's good my, thing you mentioned right that. There. We were hot when we traded traded him for Clyde. We weren't happy, but Clyde came in, started balling. We like okay. This do me business. When Clyde was dropping forties, we like okay, okay, he mean business now. That's right. And him and Dream cooking. I said we got a chance here, and we got it done. Wow! And, and to give you a little history of, on Jamal Mashburn. Jamal Mashburn was New York City Player of the Year and didn't make. Excuse me, he was Mister Basketball of New York State and didn't make the McDonald All American team. Isn't that crazy? That is insane. And, and, and they sent five that year, and he wasn't one of them. So that's crazy. How's Mashburn that damn McDonald's All American? Because he didn't go to five star. Ross well, Strickland didn't either. Ross Strickland didn't make McDonald's either. Wow. It's crazy. Politics. That's nuts, man. Yeah. But both of them turned out pretty good in the league. That's <laughs> both of them balled out in the league. That's, that's right. Cool. That's right. That's right. They, they had a longer career than. I think all right. five of the McDonald's all exactly. Americans. Yeah. That's why I said do the research on a lot of these New York basketball. How many guys play double figures? It's, 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 you know, I know Ed did, I did, Kenny did, Chris did. After that, I don't know. Who else? I know Pearl did, didn't. I know Walt didn't. No, no, no. And these guys is all Kenny American. Is they got double figures for sure. Yeah, I think Kenny got like 18 on a low. I don't think he got that much. Yeah, I think I Rayford think, got double figures too. I think, I think Kenny. Got, I think. I, I think, think Kenny Anderson. Got, Kenny, I think got thirteen or fourteen in. I know I he played Kenny, on a lot of teams too. Along, I know. Yes, Kenny Anderson did. Uh, I'm gonna go right now. Uh, let me see. Years in the league, because I just was looking at this. Uh, Did 
52, he played. Let me go on Wikipedia. Just was looking at this the other day. NBA career stats. He played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, seventeen years. Damn, good for good for Mr. Chip. That's yeah, like on a low, like we, we look at it, right? Yeah, that I, I know Steph probably played double figures. Yeah, Steph, I think played thirteen. Yeah, and then recreate himself over in China, become an icon, right? And that's what I'm liking. I want to see guys. Y'all last is double figures in the league. You know, that's what I'm right. Saying? So I think I got eleven in. So I'm like, yeah, yeah that's Kenny got eleven. I know Ed. I think got ten or eleven. Yeah. So I don't know how many Ice got in Ice Reynolds. I think Ice only got three. Yeah, you know what I'm yep. saying? A lot of these guys, man. Yeah. A man who I saw in Vegas, Gary Springer, man. That dude was a damn legend. Man. Yes. He had his knee surgeries, man. Wow. They talk about him as well. He was just on a on my guys uh, of a yeah, show. Him and Steve together. Him and Steve was on together. Yes, yeah. And my guy, A-Ball, yeah, my yeah. young guy. <laughs> my man, yep. Steve-O, Steve Two, Burke. three, four. Yeah, he played four. Five years in the league, uh, cool. Jerry Ice Reynolds. Yeah, man. I mean, these guys yeah. are good players, man. Yeah. All of these guys were good players. All right, brother. Top five players you played with? Um, Hakeem Olajuwon. Mr. 34. Tim Duncan. Mm. Hall of Famer. Uh, David Robinson, Clyde Drexler, and Charles. Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer, five Hall of Famers. No, no, not just five Hall of Famers. Four out of the five are top fifty greatest. Yes, but Tim Duncan's top seventy-five. Yeah, like who who's playing with this this caliber of talent? And that's you started in high school. People. That's all I tell people, y'all. Y'all talk about this these guys right now. None of these dudes, like Draymond, try to talk about Barkley. I said Draymond. Barkley will eat your fucking lunch, yo. John Barkley will tear Dre Barkley to part, dude. Eat, exactly. Yes, yes. Eat him alive. You see eat what Chris Webber tried to climb Barkley. Barkley dropped 56 on him. Y'all try to climb me on that Nike commercial? Let me give you 56. Easy. Easy. Had 30 at half. <laughs> they weren't climbing him no more after that. I oh, guess. no, no. Yeah. Not at all. Not at all. All right, last one, my brother. Top five players in New York City history. Whew. Number one for sure is Kareem, for sure. Uh, I got to put Bernard King in there for sure. Uh, I got to put Lenny Wilkins in there for sure. Mm. Who else we got out this city? Billy Cunningham. I know he's from Brooklyn, for sure. Erasmus Hall, that's right. Yeah, and I got to give my man love, who's my boy, one of my best friends, who taught me how to be a pro guy. No, no, no. How am I going to forget about my man from the Bronx, Tiny Archibald? I can't forget about the Brooklyn. Those yes. are my five, yo. I'm yes. like, I was going to put Chris Muller. I'm like, how am I going to forget about Tiny? I can't. Tiny don't get to respect me this way. I can't. Man, I can't put. I got to put my man Tiny in there. No, so he, he did it big. Guys, you know? No, nah, no. Nah. Listen, brother. Uh, it, it, it's been an honor to have you on the show. Um, now that I get to conversate with you and see that you, you're definitely a real one, man, definitely down to earth, and you put in so much work uh, in the league, in college, and even in New York City. We didn't forget about you, brother. Um, we're, we're very proud of you, and we want to just give you your flowers and let you know that you're definitely one of the best players in New York City history, and you know, guys like myself, you gave me a chance to dream and and want to make it to the next level. Uh, and even though we didn't, we kind of lived through you, brother. So I want to say thank you, man. And New York City love you, brother. Uh, and I love New York City back. I appreciate you. My city means a lot, a lot to me. And everybody always talking about, you just always, you just so New York. I'm like, you damn right. I'm so New York. I love my city. It's what made me, and it got me this far. You know, I love my city. I love my city. I love everything about it. I love the Gauchos. I love the Riverside. 
I love 55th everywhere, man. I done played all over the city, man. I love my city. And uh, I appreciate you having me on tonight, man. I had a blast. And uh, hope to see some more of your podcasts, man. You need to have guys like Dwayne Johnson, Kenny Patterson. <laughs> Brother, spread the word. Spread uh, it, it takes guys like you to spread the word and be like, yo, my guy Glenn Poo Harding out of New York City got the number one podcast for New York City basketball. You guys need to go and support it. That's all on Facebook. That's how I'm finding a lot of guys. I see Dwayne, I see Gary Springer, a lot of these guys on Facebook. So I like how you track me down. I appreciate that. So yeah, there's a lot of great ballers, man, that people don't are not talking about. Vic and Vern Fleming, Tony Red Bruin. Come on. Those, now, now listen, you talking about underrated, right? Vern Fleming, and he leads the league with the least amount of technical fouls. That's and being another a pure guy. Class, That's class another guy act. who played a nice amount of years in the yes, league. Mark, yes. Mark Jackson played 17. You know what I'm saying? We represent New York, boy. I tell you, man. They represent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, brother, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Appreciate um, you, my man. Um, listen, I got, I got, I got merch. Uh, I got hoodies. Let me just show you real quick. This is how we keep. No sponsorship, you know. Even for the tournament that I ran this year, you know, the official home for New York City basketball. You know what I'm saying? Got the hoodies. Got the polo shirts. Love to see this down in Houston, man, because people are going to ask you, where you get that from? Uh, look, it says the official for New York City basketball, brother. So I'll be in contact with you, man. And, and I'll make you know, sure I grab some of those for me for sure. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you, man. No problem. Thank you for the time. Glad to talk about New York basketball with you, brother. I appreciate it. No doubt. Mario Ellie, salute. Salute. Take care, brother. Yep. Wow. Look at that, right? Just when you thought you knew about New York City basketball, just when you know about the guys who really put in that work and who earned their right to be one of New York City's greatest. When we talking about the top five or top ten players that come out of New York City that made it to the league, put some respect to my man name, Mario Ellie, one of the best to ever do it. He did it for us. He always repping for New York City wherever he goes. And you can't tell me. Three championships. Three-time All-American. Three-time player of the year. And he even got three triplets out of it. Right? Look, that's three. Right? So just remember tonight. Do your history. Do your homework. And remember some of the greatest players to ever come out of New York City. And one of those happened to be Mario Elliott for Manhattan. So, for saying that, I'm about to sign off. I am your host, Glenn Poo Harding, and you've been watching Basketball Heads Live. NYC Basketball Network. We are the official home for New York City basketball. Peace.